All right, welcome to podcast number two from chapter eight. And in this one, we're going to cover the second section of the chapter. And this one deals with the basics of photosynthesis. And we're going to start out with what is the overall chemical equation. And as you can see here, your products, actually, let me, let me rephrase this one, your reactants, and the reactants are everything that are to the left of the arrow. You get that written in here for you. The reactants are carbon dioxide and water. And over here, we have the products. Anything that the arrow is pointing at is the products. And so with the help of the energy of light, the plant is going to get carbon dioxide to react with water. And that will produce uh, glucose, which is C6H12O6. Uh, and this one, it says it's organic matter. But we know this better as glucose. And then as a waste product, you're going to give off oxygen. All right. Now, a lot of these, you'll see this written in this form a lot. But sometimes underneath the arrow, besides having light, it'll also say chlorophyll. Uh, chlorophyll is the plant pigment that will uh, actually capture this energy of light and use it to get this done. Okay. Now, the best way to remember this is uh, you've got carbon dioxide and water will join together to form sugar and oxygen. And I always kind of remember this as a devilish process because your coefficients are 6, 6, 6. This doesn't get a 6 because it's too sweet. See, OSE, it's too sweet. All right, what are the steps of photosynthesis? It's divided into two groups. The first one is called the light-dependent reaction. This one means it has to use light. Now, in the light-dependent reactions, let me move this up just a smidge, you're going to give off oxygen as the waste product, and you're going to create two things, and these are it over here, ATP and NADPH, that will move on. All right, so here's your waste product. Now, the thing that comes in is going to be water. Water is going to be split in half by light energy. And this light energy is going to be captured by the plant. Now, you see this word here, thylakoids? Thylakoids are green. Now, I know I'm writing this in red. Okay, thylakoids are green because they contain the chlorophyll. Now, the process in which the uh, water molecule gets broken in half is a process called photolysis. If you say photolysis, you will spell it correctly every time. Uh, the prefix lysis means to break, and photo refers to light. So what, what this word means is you're using light to break something. In this case, you're breaking water in half. Now, when you break water in half, you get oxygen, which is a waste product. And you're also going to get ATP, a little bit of ATP, which is an energy molecule. But you're also going to get this NADPH. And what NADPH basically is, it's an electron carrier. It's carrying high energy electrons. And this ATP and NADPH is going to be used to power the second part of photosynthesis, which is known as a Calvin cycle. All right, now all, make sure you got all this written down because it's going to go away. All right, the second step is called the light independent reactions because it doesn't use light directly. Now, sometimes this is known as the Calvin cycle named after the scientist who discovered this. Now, what this will use, it will use the products of the light-dependent reactions, ATP and NADPH, and it's also going to use some CO2 from the atmosphere. That's where this stuff right here is coming from, and that's going to be used to make sugars. So the ATP and the NADPH are going to supply the energy to rearrange these molecules into sugar. And if you can remember, the uh, formula for sugar Let's use, uh, let's use blue, C6H12O6, you know, carbohydrate. There's your C's, there's your O's, and those are your H's. So the ATP and the NADPH are going to supply the energy to rearrange this stuff into this. Okay, now the stroma is the liquid part of the chloroplast. We're going to talk about that in another podcast. All right, now, when ATP gives up its energy, it becomes ADP. That was from the previous podcast. When NADPH dra drops off a hydrogen and an electron, it becomes NADP. 
Now these guys are going to go back to the light dependent reactions and pick up the P and the electrons in order to keep this cycle going. All right, so this goes nonstop during the light of the day. Now at night, none of this happens because you don't have any um, any light to get this going because you have to have this going before that happens. But these essentially are happening at the same time. All right, you need to make sure that you know this. You all this in red. I'm sorry, this is blue. Make sure you know all this. And then, of course, everything over here that I wrote in red and, you know, a little bit in blue, you have to know these. So put a little star next to this in your notes. I have to know this stuff. All right, what is NADPH and what is NADP plus? All right, I just mentioned this a little bit, but NADP plus is an electron carrier. Think of like a pickup truck that will grab an electron and it's going to deliver it to somewhere. Now, when that electron gets there, remember from the podcast number one, electrons contain energy. So this energy is going to be used to do something. Now, when it has an electron on it, it is called NADPH. All right, so let's write ourselves a little note there. Oops, let's reverse that. I got that going a little too fast. All right, remember this sentence right here. You want to make sure that you remember this. It's NADPH when it's carrying an electron. No electron, NADP+. Plus. All right, now, these electrons are going to be used to power the Calvin cycle. We just saw that on the previous slide because these are not going to happen automatically unless it has some energy. All right, so let's do this little animation. All right, so the light-dependent reactions are going to make NADPH. NADPH is going to go to the Calvin cycle. It's going to drop off an electron. The NADP plus is going to go back to the light dependent reactions, and this whole cycle is going to start again. Okay? These are the couriers that deliver electrons back and forth from these two cycles. Okay, how do uh, plants capture the energy in sunlight? Well, they're going to use a pigment. A pigment is anything, let's put this definition down here. A pigment, a substance that will absorb some wavelengths of light. Let me get caught up here. And it will reflect others. All right, so remember when you were a little kid and you're playing with the prism and it created the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, etc. All right. Uh, certain colors or certain pigments will absorb all the other colors of light, but it'll reflect others. So, for example, you notice how this chlorophyll here is green? Chlorophyll will absorb all the colors in the rainbow with the exception of green. The green reflects, and that's how we interpret chlorophyll as being green. All right, so what does chlorophyll look like? Well, chlorophyll is essentially a phospholipid. But instead of having a magnesium head, I'm sorry, instead of having a phosphate head, remember phospholipid? This one has a magnesium ion in it. All right? So as you can see here, it's just like a phospholipid with one exception. One of the tails is shorter. So it looks like a magnesium lollipop with two sticks. All right? The magnesium part's the polar head, just like you would see in a phospholipid. And then you have your, no, your nonpolar tails. All right? Now I want to call your attention to this area down here. Uh, fluor chlorophyll molecules are bunched together in clusters, and these clusters are photosystems. Now, these photosystems have really creative names. One of them is called photosystem 1, and the other one's called photosystem 2. As you get into a higher level, level biology class, you're going to learn all the details of how these photosystems work. <clears throat> all right, so moving ahead. All right, so what happens to chlorophyll when light hits it? Well, first of all, an electron gets excited. Now what that means is that electron has gained energy and it's jumped up in energy level. So remember in podcast number one where I was describing how light is made by electrons going up and down. When it comes back down, light is emitted. All right. So you guys remember uh, when you're in middle school or elementary school and you grabbed the dandelion and you, you put it between your thumb and your index finger and you would say like Becky had a baby and her head popped off. That's where that comes from. I just thought that was kind of funny. All right. Now, over here, let's just describe what's going on. We have light from the sun. It hits this uh, chlorophyll molecule. Metals, of which magnesium is a metal, metals like to give away their electrons really easy. So the energy in this light goes to this electron. 
as the electron gets excited and it pops right off. Now, who's going to pick it up? You got it. Our old buddy, NADP. And when it grabs the electron, it becomes NADPH. All right, now, this magnesium's lost an electron. We've got to give it back to them. And this is where this process of photolysis comes from. Sunlight is going to hit this water molecule. The energy from the sunlight, let's see if I move this down here a little bit. The energy from the sunlight is going to break this water molecule in half. Okay? From this water molecule, you're going to get the waste product oxygen. You're also going to get some electrons that are given back to this magnesium, another light uh, energy packet. Actually, let's go back to here. Uh, light energy packets are called photons. So the energy in light is called a photon. So another photon hits this chlorophyll molecule, and then this uh, electron that was donated is actually popped off. All right. Now remember this is NADP plus right here, plus an H. These H's will be used either to make NADPH or it's going to be used to make ATP. All right. I want you to pay attention to this diagram and you need to understand it. So make sure that you totally understand how this works because you need to be able to replace these electrons and it's going to come from water. The number one reason that you water a plant is for this. All right, what the heck's a pigment? As I stated earlier, this is a substance that absorbs some colors, but it reflects others. All right, so why is chlorophyll green? Once again, it reflects green light. Now, what colors does chlorophyll absorb the best? It's going to absorb the blues, the reds, and the violets. Um, especially these reds contain a lot of energy. So the plant is going to use these colors to power what we just saw in the previous slide splitting the water to create these electrons that are going to be used to make sugars later. All right, now this graph shows you the absorption spectrum of, of chlorophyll. Okay, so here you go, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, and the indigo's in here. All right, you see these little peaks right here? These are the colors that are chlorophyll will absorb the best. So you can see here, this blue is one of its favorites. And then down here, you've got the reds. Now, chlorophyll comes in two flavors, creatively called chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. They both essentially absorb the same kind of colors. Now, notice down here, chlorophyll doesn't absorb any of those light wavelengths. And guess what it matches up with? Green. So you absorb these colors the green is reflected off, and that's what we see. All right, that is going to conclude podcast number two, the overview of photosynthesis.